Hey everyone, welcome to our small footprint. We've got a new, lot of new viewers, so if you're new here, then my name is Nissa, and we are a family of eight who live off grid in Queensland, Australia. So we do monthly to six weekly shopping and a lot of my content is based on how we use that food for our large family how we make do to get through the whole period of time with it and how we use everything we have so at the moment we are uh, it's, we've got we're four weeks into a six-week period so we are using up what has been preserved during the first half of the month and put aside and things like that cleaning out the freezers and stuff and I share all of that as well as everything to do with the homestead so at the moment it is raining and it is supposed to rain for a week so we are not doing a whole lot of outdoor stuff we have a whole lot of wood that needs to be sanded and treated and turned into gates and things like that but we do not have a barn or a shed structure that we can do that in while it's raining so we have to wait until the weather clears up so we will do that once the weather clears up and we'll share all that with you as well uh, but for the moment today is a kitchen day um, I am still trying to use up stuff that I find in the freezer and leftover produce and things like that and I'm bringing you along to see so we did some sweet potato gnocchi today as well as made some of the skinny mixes thermomix chicken kievs with some chicken that I found in the bottom of the freezer so I hope you enjoy watching and I will see you again next time thanks guys So I didn't end up doing anything with the sweet potato that I had steamed the day before because the kids requested tuna bag. So I stuck it in the fridge to make gnocchi today. Now it's preferable to make the dough up with the uh, the product warm from everything I've I've done and experimented with and read, but I wasn't overly concerned. I'm sh I was sure I could pull something together. So the other thing is that I don't have a ricer. I think I'm going to invest in a food mill and a ricer as one of the next two uh, kitchen gadgets that I buy. So at the moment I only have an old uh, potato masher that doesn't work real well, especially not on something cold. So I decided to run it through the Thermomix. This wouldn't work with white potato I don't reckon because if you ran it through the thermix you just end up with really gluggy mess the sweet potato wasn't too bad but it still wouldn't have been my choice of ways to get this to a point to make dough with but it worked so this is the sweet potato sweet potato done in the thermix into sort of a puree uh, then I poured it into a bowl and I added flour so I've tried a lot of recipes that I found online and a lot of them have different ratios of the you know potato product to the flour and things like that and none of them ever seem to consistently work for me I think it really depends on the water content of the product that you're using whether you've roasted it whether you've steamed it whether you've boiled it how long it's sat whether it's been covered or whether it's been open or you know anything like that so I basically just add flour until it feels right gnocchi from all the experimentation I've done over the last couple of months the dough has to be really wet you don't want to make it into a dough the first time I made it I really expected it to be more like a bread dough but it doesn't need to be there it needs to be a wet sort of a tacky sticky sort of a dough it's not even really a dough I would say it's more like a thick cake batter uh, that you can handle so I brought it together as much as I needed to and put it aside on the mat then what I do is I use my metal dough cutter and I cut lengths off it I put extra flour down on the mat and I use that flour to roll it out into a log so it's well floured on the outside which is fine because it absorbs that as it sits but it also any excess will just go off into the water when you boil it so I roll it into a sausage and then I just use my metal dough cutter to cut it into fairly even sized pieces I don't uh, shape my gnocchi at all like I don't uh, use a gnocchi board or I I did use a fork the first time I did it to create those ridges in the gnocchi but realistically my family doesn't care and it's unimportant so I just make little pillows and squeeze them in the middle and they have a nice little sort of a bow tie shape I suppose uh, so I just do that with them all so I just roll them and then cut them and place them on a tray to dry now I didn't put any egg in this dough some of the gnocchi doughs that I've used have an egg in it this one doesn't have an egg which I think would be great in summer I'm going to look at setting up a dehydrator uh, 
with just like a a computer fan and screening that can sit out in the sun and I reckon I could dehydrate this gnocchi to store I'm gonna have to look into it but it's only flour and product so theoretically I could dehydrate this and then I could store it and they could make it when they want it because I don't actually eat the gnocchi but everyone else really likes it uh, so I just did I repeated the process I cut pieces off add enough flour to get it to be handleable roll it into sausages slice it up and put it on a tray uh, I just do it until there's none left which is again why I don't really use measurements because I just cooked up two big sweet potatoes and then created the the amount of dough that that made for me I didn't do anything special with it once I have them all done I boil them so when you place them you get your water up to a boil and you place them in the water they will sink to the bottom if your water is boiling enough they will not stick to the bottom they'll just drop into the water so you want a nice deep pot and you want it at a rolling boil when you add them so you add them into the boiling water and once they are cooked they float because they've got air in them or whatever however it works I haven't looked at the science of that but I assume it's because they're boiled they're lighter they've got air pockets in them now so they float once they float they are ready to eat so you can either eat them straight out of the pot boiled like this but I like to fry them off uh, that means that because I'm doing multiple batches they're not going to get gluggy and stick together in a bowl because the frying them creates a little bit of a skin on them so I'm making three or four different batches through that pot and if I fry them off then when they go into the bowl they're going to still keep separate they're not going to end up sticking to each other so I fry them off afterwards and I just fry them off in my cast iron in a little bit of ghee so uh, these can be served multiple ways. You can just have melted butter and sage. You can do anything you want with them. But the kids really like creamed corn with it. So that was what was requested and that's what I made. And I just make a really simple creamed corn. Very similar to the start of the tuna bake. It's a roux with flour and butter equal parts. Cooked off till it's nutty. And then adding whatever liquid you're adding. I added coconut cream and chicken stock to this one. Cooked it off till it's a white sauce. Added some... I added something seasoning in it, maybe some chicken stock or uh, French onion soup mix. I can't remember what I added, but some sort of a powdered flavoring to mix through. And then two tins of drained corn, and that is creamed corn, and the kids really like it. So they had creamed corn with their gnocchi. The next thing I wanted to make was some Skinny Mixes Chicken Kievs. So I found a couple of vacuum sealed bags of chicken breast in the freezer when I was having a look at what I was trying to use. I still haven't done that full inventory, but I did have a rattle through it. Uh, so I had some bags of slivered almonds in there as well. Normally I would use whole almonds, but I don't have any at the moment because that order is still coming this week because I got a bit slack and forgot to actually check out on the shopping cart which I do a lot I fill my shopping cart I browse I fill my shopping cart and then I sit there and I go that's a lot of money and then I don't check out but anyway I have to do that today so I found some of the slivered almonds and this chicken breast in the chest freezer uh, so first you make up your uh, crumb for your chicken gives now the skinny mixes recipe skinny mixes is a sort of a low carb sort of a diet so they use an almond crumb and that has always worked well for us when we've done it before so I and I have almonds so I did but you could use any sort of a bread crumb here that you wanted a uh, panko crumb would probably be really nice could it be nice and light and crunchy but I used the almond one the recipe is available on their website I'll put a link down the bottom so I ground the almonds up with some salt and some onion flakes and I used some of this Louisiana seasoning mix that I've still got here because I've got it here and I'm using it in various different things and grind them up until they're a breadcrumb consistency they still won't be quite as fine as breadcrumbs though my Thermomix blades are pretty dull so it would go finer if when I get my new one if I get my new one which I, I still think I think I am but we'll see <laughs> but for the moment it went fine enough in mine uh, then you put aside those crumbs and you use this the bowl again so the processes of a lot of these skinny mixes recipes is that the flavors are going to be going through the whole dish because you empty the bowl but reuse it in the correct order so the next thing to do was to create the filling for the chicken kievs uh, I used ghee because we don't use butter and then I had some smoked garlic paste in the freezer. So there's a video, I'll try and remember to put it in the cards, where I made a, a huge tray of smoked garlic paste that I scored and broke up and put in the freezer. And I use this in a lot of things. It's delicious. 
it is definitely a way that I will preserve garlic again next year. So I added that. I went and grabbed some parsley from the garden, which is really nice that the parsley is obviously uh, frost hardy. So I've got two big bunches of parsley in the garden at the moment. Uh, and I put a bit of dried thyme because my thyme has died. I need to plant myself some winter thyme so that I've got it in winter as well. Uh, so I put that all in and then I blended it up. So I just wanted to blend it up into sort of a, a butter emulsion. It's basically a butter emulsion. It's a garlic butter. And then into a paste. And so this is what it was looked like when it was finished. I then wanted to chill it because uh, you want the chicken Kiev innards to stay inside the chicken Kievs. The best way to do that is to freeze your butter mix. So I just laid it all out on a piece of baking paper and then rolled it into a log so that I could slice pieces off it and then stuck it in the freezer. So it'll just sit in the freezer till I'm ready for it. I'll use a sharp knife and I'll cut discs off it and then those discs can be used inside the Kievs. Uh, this will probably end up being too much butter for this recipe, but that's fine. I will use it in many other ways. It could be just defrosted and spread on sourdough. Sounds really good to me. Uh, so then you have to, so you take that out of the, out of the, thermix bowl and put it aside uh, so it's in the freezer now and then you haven't cleaned the bowl again so now you're going to dice your chicken in that thermix bowl so you've had all these different flavors in it and you're adding the chicken to it as well so you put the diced chicken into your thermix now the batches are done in 500 gram batches and because I'm mincing the meat and my thermix is old and the blades aren't great I did it in single batches I'm sure you could probably do the double batch at once if you had one of the newer thermixes but mine was not going to cooperate so I didn't want to risk it so you put the diced chicken in the thermix it's 500 grams you put an egg salt a little bit of the crumb mix and normally you'd add parmesan i don't use parmesan for food that the kids and daryl are eating so i put in some nutritional yeast which will give that same sort of color and a little bit of the same cheesy umami flavor added to that chicken mix and it'll work the same way and it's what they're used to so they're pretty happy with using that as an alternative to adding parmesan Once it's been processed in the thermix, it looks like this. It's a real sort of emulsified chicken mince. Uh, it doesn't look like mince. It looks like a, an emulsion of the meat, a bit like the inside of a sausage. Uh, and then I, so then I put that in into a bowl aside and put another second batch through. So I did exactly the same process with the second batch and then I added it to the first batch and just put it it's all together and stuck it in the fridge for a little bit until I was ready to do something with it. Uh, so, this ended up being a kilo of mince all up the recipe states you can make four to six out of each 500 gram mix i just did four out of each 500 gram mix because that was easy so when you're dealing with this mince you really want to have wet hands so that it doesn't stick to you so yeah i have a little bowl there that i dip my hands in constantly to keep them wet uh, and i just broke it all up into eight because that was nice and convenient uh, so and i didn't weigh it or anything i just broke it all up into approximately the same sizes and eight different sizes what you then want to do is you want to flatten it out into your hand so your hands wet so it's not going to stick to your hand and you want to flatten it out nice and wide sort of uh, similar sort of a thickness all the way through uh, you can thin it a little bit in the middle because you're going to be pinching the edges around it and you're going to put your uh, a butter emulsion in it so you just put whatever amount you want realistically don't overdo it because if you overdo it then they're going to you're not going to be able to cover the uh, the butter and then it's going to seep out when you're cooking it which sort of defeats the purpose uh, but you want to put that butter emulsion in the middle and you want to fold the chicken around that butter emulsion so you want a nice even layer of chicken all the way around that butter that will be your best bet to it not bursting so you shape it around the the uh butter emulsion and then you put it aside or you can crumb it i did find that it was much easier to shape a whole bunch of it them and then crumb a whole bunch of them because the crumbs stick to your hands because your hands are wet and sticky uh, so it's much easier to shape a whole bunch and then crumb a whole bunch and then wash your hands so this is what i did with crumbing all i did was i put them in the thing you don't want to put too much pressure on the chicken because you don't want to push it the butter emulsion through the chicken but you want to firmly push all the crumbs into it because we're not doing an egg wash or anything if i was using plain bread crumbs i'd probably egg wash the meat and then 
I might even flour it, egg wash and crumb it because the crumbs aren't going to stick anywhere near as well as the almond meal crumbs are going to into this meat. So you just sort of want to press it into them as much as possible put it aside if when you go to cook them you notice that there's some bare spots just keep a little bit of that crumb aside and press it into those spots again uh, and so that it's got a nice even coating you then uh, fry these off for a little bit you don't have to but it does help seal them and create some nice browning on those crumbs so I just fried them off in a bit of ghee in the cast iron pan only like probably 30 seconds on each side and then place them in a tray and I cooked them in the barbecue because the oven's not working so these were just cooked in a tray on the barbecue uh, that this is what they look like when you cut them open if you do it fairly well I didn't get a great angle on this but you know you can only cut them open once <laughs> so I'll have to remember that next time about the the camera needs to come up over my shoulder or something to see that that butter spurting out of the of the Kievs but it worked really well we had uh, liquid in the middle which is the main thing and the chicken was really moist because it had that liquid in the middle as well as the egg and the chicken mince and the crumbing on the outside I these can be frozen so you can get them all the way to crumbing stage and then freeze them flash freeze them separate so they don't stick together and then stick them all in a container or a bag or whatever and they can be cooked straight from frozen which also helps with them not exploding out the butter emulsion so you can just stick them on a tray and cook them for like I think it's 30 35 minutes at about 180 200 I'm sure it says so on the recipe if you click on the link but uh, it's a great meal to have in the freezer as well to be able to pull out very similar to those Kievs that you can buy in the store like in the deli section except that these ones you know what's in them so and you've made them yourself and dairy free so it's great so that was today's cooking adventures thank you very much for joining me and i will see you again in the next day or so